Hello everybody, in today's video we're going to look at a set of Lister Star horse clippers. I'm Simon and welcome to Oakside Saddlery. These clippers in, uh, sent to me for repair, apparently they just stopped working, popped and cleared out. So first time I've looked at them, a little bit of hair, nothing too bad. Uh, we'll have a look, see what we have on them. So the first thing I notice is the thermo fuse, which is just that little button there that's just popped out, which means it's either overheated, got a lot of hair in it, or um, the motor or something else has gone wrong and is causing problems in there. So if this pops out on your clippers, you quite often find there's a little button somewhere, you can press it back in, hopefully it should get you going. So I'll plug these in, I'll just see what's going to happen, and then we'll see how we go on. So that's them plugged in, and we can see we've got nothing there. So let's see if that button will stay in. So it's not going to stay in. This is a, another problem you get. Sometimes they, they need to go further than what you can press. So sometimes you just need something to go with it. So we can press on there. And that's it clicked in. Did you hear that? Nice little click. So we'll see what happens. Turn them back on. Um, that could be the shortest video I've done on YouTube. It's even quicker than a short. No, we won't leave it like that. We'll strip them down and we'll have a look just to see if there's anything else inside them. But we could be all right there to set them off. So I'm quickly going to unplug them because I'm not going to take anything apart that's still plugged into the mains. So unplug then. So first thing for these, then, get to get these blades off. They don't look too bad. So just going to put my finger over the end of that pin. Unscrew from here. We've got our tensioners, our spring parts of the blade so if these work she wants the blade sharpened i don't do blade sharpening but i send them to a chap who actually lives quite near to me so i tend to put these back together again even though this does do that it just stops me losing them because they do tend to roll around a bit so we need to get the head off head's a bit funny on these we need to undo a screw through there that's quite deep inside it because the head is attached to this single screw and then there's a whatever you would call this, some sort of locking mechanism underneath. So let me just get a screwdriver for that. So a little screw in there, it's just a normal Phillips screw or Torx, whatever you want to call them. Well, they're different, aren't they? But we know what I mean. One's got just two crosses on it and the other one's got the little bits at the side. So that one there is quite free. I thought I'd turn. One of the hardest bits you get with these is they sit just inside, <laughs> not enough to come out. So it's it's free, but it's just not enough or not want to fall out. There it goes. So we put that up there. So this one here has got a little pin at the bottom of there. Let's get another little screwdriver for that. So all we've got is just under this part here. You can see that? There's a little bit there. So we just leave that up, do it a little bit at a time. Once you get it so far up, you can start to pull it a bit more. So now we're going to hold the head and this leap. So what we've got was that little clip. It's just in there. It just wedges against a couple of parts inside. This now should just push off the front. There it is. So we can see no hair's got in it. It's got grease in there. It's quite clean, to be honest. A bit of grease still in there. You can see the motor's on there. It's not too bad. So we've got, depending on which year these are, I can't, I can't remember how they go, but some have five screws. Some of them don't have one of these screws here. They're all the same, except these two are longer than the three down the bottom there. So we'll just get these free. I can't use my electric screwdriver on these because the bit on them is too big in the gaps on there so it's just have to use another one just push that out so that's the foam filter i can see that's twisted to the side not a problem so as you notice two different lengths of screws so the longer ones are the top two all the short ones go down the bottom So 
one's got a bit of hair in it so we can see that there's quite a bit in there you can tell which color horse pearson's got a nice gray there it goes One's out. There's one still stuck in there that hasn't come free. And it doesn't want to go. So, to squeeze these apart. If they've not been apart before, this sticker is obviously put across the whole thing. And it sticks to both edges. So sometimes you have to sort of slice down underneath that to get it apart. But you don't want to lose it because some of these symbols on here, so see the two squares there? These are technically important for a pat test. So if it hasn't got this symbol on it, it's not what they call double insulated so this will have no earth wire running into here it's double insulated means it's better less chance of you getting a shock you'd have to break through into here to get to something that you could possibly get a shock so all of that information is all part of what would be on the pat test i'm not so bad i know for well they're all double insulated so i will always do them even if these stickers are damaged but some people might not want to do it so we're just going to start to pull it apart so we can see the base has come apart and the top part, see where it's just gripping at that point there? So it doesn't want to go. So we're just going to try and get a little bit of leverage underneath here. Sometimes these are really stuck on. Other times they're not so bad. That's part all done. It goes so all the components are going to be attached to one side you can tell a lot by weight this is trying to turn on the cable which is why it's going it is actually the way it wants to go but you can tell a lot by weight it's heavier on one side so i know as i'm pulling it apart the weight is actually onto this side the other way if ever you start to pull it apart just keep your arm what it's doing and make sure everything is staying where you want it so interior of one of these cables decided to have a twist in it let me just straighten that out a little bit so it stops it rolling over and not too bad they're not my favorite clippers a lot of people have the lister star probably because they're fairly cheap compared to some of the others but as you can see it's only got a little tiny motor in it if you think about some of the other horse clippers we do they've got really big heavy duty motors this one's like quite something that's quite small you'd probably find this on a radio control car or something like that but you've got your gears which can attach to the head you got a little bearing you've got a fan you've got the motor none of this is serviceable so it's a complete replacement that attaches to the circuit board so you've got a switch which is here this part slides across and presses a button down on top of there and that thermo fuse is this little box here you can get these the problem is if they've started tripping it's usually a fault somewhere between these two i've never had any success in changing just the motor if I change the motor, invariably it trips again. You have to change the motor and the circuit board, in which case you're starting to get the price of a replacement set of clippers. So they're never my favourite. I don't mind cleaning them up, sending them back and seeing how people get on. But I certainly wouldn't be bothered with replacing any of these parts. So on that note then, getting this cable out and unattached. There's two more screws in there. So we're just going to take these off of here. That one was actually quite loose, not even screwed up properly. Considering they don't appear to have been apart before, that's probably from manufacture, and this one was loose as well and not screwed up properly. So that will come out of there. They're the same as the smaller ones, so it doesn't matter. This cable can come off of here now when we pull that cable clamp out. That can come out of there. All of this is all loose, there's nothing on it. So this part is the switch, just sits off. All of this will just pull apart. So, not really a lot to clean up. I'll give them a quick blow over, tidy them up a bit, see how we get on. Otherwise, as I said, a list of star horse clippers stripped apart and ready to be serviced. See you again in a bit. This will probably just be one video, so see you in a bit.